Hello again. Uh, my name is Justin Williams. As I said before, the two K links. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so my project. Oh, let me introduce my project. My project is on drug repurposing strategies for Alzheimer's. And before I delve into my project, I think it's important to discuss the state of Alzheimer's today. So about 5.8 million Americans are living with disease. Uh, between them, the only known risk factor is age, with patients who are, with people 65 years or older being the particular uh, risk group of that age group. Um, symptoms include loss of short-term memory, uh, behavioral disorders such as wandering, yelling, agitation, poor judgment, and loss of cognitive ability and function. Uh, current treatments are mostly supportive with nursing home aides and other people, uh, family members mostly being the support group for the patient. There are things called cholinesterase inhibitors, which only moderately improve cognitive ability and memory function. Uh, to this end, my goal in this project is to use computational tools to develop and discover, well, to discover new potential agents to, to, for the treatment of Alzheimer's. Here's just a brief overview of the process that I did in this project. Uh, to the far left, we see GeneShot, Geo, KEG, GWAS catalog, and Creeds, which are all the sources of data that I collected from. Uh, in the middle, we see Cluster Grammar, which using Damien's code, I was able to visualize clusters and do a first set of analyses. And then to the far right, we see Chia and L1000, Chia3 and L1000 FWD, which served as the final round of analysis before results were given. We will begin with the data collection phase. Here I used size sources such as NIH's GEO, the KEG database, KEG pathways, GeneShot, and the GWAS catalog to query for terms related to Alzheimer's or dementia. Through there, I was collecting their RNA-seq gene data and compiling it into a GMT file, which again stands for gene matrix transpose file. This was chosen because this file format allows for ease of data integration between vast amounts of, of different sources and genes. Um, each gene set was then given a descriptive title and identifying where it came from, what its regulation was, whether it's upregulated up or downregulated, and a metadata description of what it is. Uh, using this com uh, combined and compiled gene set, I then ran it through a first round of analysis. Uh, for example, I used Damon's latent space code, autoencoder, and then visualized in cluster grammar the similarity between the gene sets within this GMT file. One particular cluster of interest is this bottom right one, which was found to incorporate genomic, transcriptome, and literature sources, which is something we did not expect, and so it became our primary cluster and gene set of focus. Using this cluster, I then compiled the gene sets that were found into a separate GMT file and then ran them through a code I developed to find consensus genes between those gene files. We ran three consensus, a uh, three consensus gene set and compiled a singular gene set of those consensus genes. With those consensus genes, I then ran them through Chia3 and L1000FWD. We'll begin with the analysis of L1000FWD. Here, I ran the up and down genes given from that consensus into the database and it returned either mimicking drugs or reversing drugs. Uh, by mimicking and reversing, I would refer to the drugs that either mimic the signature of the gene set or reverse the signature of the gene set. Um, in the red here, we see dexamethasone, which is a glucocorticoid receptor agonist, and it is found to mimic the signature of the gene of the consensus gene set. Uh, this was of interest to us because there is a hypothesis that cortisol and other glucocorticoids may contribute to the progression of Alzheimer's disease. In the bottom, we see this blue arrow pointing to this Broad K3304593, and it is a drug of interest because the Broad series of drugs were developed to be bioactive, but also to be under, they are also understudied. So this may potentially lead to a pathway for the development of novel agents or, if anything, for, for study towards a more concise novel agent development. Here we see a list of the similar and opposite 
are the mimicking and reversing gene drugs. We see here dexamethasone as one of the top ones. And we see here uh, fluconolone as another top agent in drug. Uh, it, is, it in itself is also a glucocorticoid receptor agonist and was of interest, again, for that reason. Up to the right here, we see the BRO K3330493, as well as another series BRO K5155600. Again, also of interest for the fact that they are bioactive and understudied and could lead to more novel agents being developed. We then turn to uh, my CHIA-3 analysis, which again releases, uh, gives a set of, a ranked set of transcription factors uh, for analysis. One of the transcription factor of interest that I found was this SCRT1. And the SCRT1 stands for a scratch family protein, a scratch family transcription factor. And it was of interest to us because SCRT1 was found to be understudied with only five publications of PubMed within the last 16 years, I believe. And also because it is exclusively found within the cerebral cortex, the brain, the hippocampus, cerebrum, and the palliative. Um, the cerebral cortex and the cerebellum, as well as the hippocampus, are all implicated within Alzheimer's, with the cerebral cortex being implicated in cognitive function and the cerebrum being implicated in motor, uh, in motor dyslexia motor dyslexia and like other motor issues, and hippocampus, of course, being implicated in memory. Through here, we then ran SCRT1 through ARCHES4, which turned up a list of potential predicted biological functions, processes, and predicted mouse phenotypes. Uh, to the left here, we see that SCRT1 was found in synaptic vessel maturation, regulation of short-term neuronal synaptic plasticity, and um, vocalization behavior, all of which deal with brain functions related to memory and related to long-term potentiation. To the right, we see predicted mouse phenotypes. Uh, some mouse phenotypes of interest were abnormal behavioral response, abnormal le learning, memory, and coordination, and abnormal synaptic plasticity, again, all related to symptoms found within Alzheimer's, such as abnormal memory, abnormal cognitive function, and abnormal like habituation and memory development. Uh, to this end, we found that my project, we found three particular conclusions of interest. SCRT1 is an understudy transcription factor with further study may lead to new etiologies for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, glucocorticoid receptor agonists are potential class of drugs that may contribute to the progression of Alzheimer's. Again, more research in wet lab, for example, in a mouse model will further conclude this or disprove this. Uh, the Broad K3305493 and other related drugs could lead to the development of novel pharmaceutical agents and were of interest. Um, further investigations are required to conclude this. Uh, to this end, I believe collecting more gene sets may improve the accuracy of these results and testing these agents with Alzheimer's disease models, again, would definitively disprove or prove this hypothesis, this conclusion. Um, I would like to give an acknowledgement to Professor Nyan and to Sherry for, oh, she's not here, uh, Sherry for developing this program and for having us all here and to the lab for being a continued source of support. So thank you.